We've learned about fish, amphibians, and reptiles. Now let's take a look at the final two divisions of our animal kingdom, the birds and mammals. If you remember, animals that are vertebrates are simply animals with a backbone, and vertebrates have an endoskeleton which offers support and protects the soft parts of the animal. Vertebrates can either be ectotherms or endotherms, meaning cold-blooded, where their body temperature changes to match their surroundings, like a reptile, or endothermic, where they're warm-blooded and their body temperature is regulated so that it remains constant. Vertebrate animals fall into the chordate phylum, and the chordate phylum is divided into classes of fish, amphibians, and reptiles, which we've already studied, and now birds and mammals. Birds are warm-blooded. They have hollow bo bones and feathers, and most can fly at least short distances. Birds are born from hard-shelled eggs. Birds include raptors, gulls, songbirds, and fowl. Nearly 10,000 modern bird species exist today, and birds are closely related to reptiles. Just think about the scales that birds have on their legs. They're scaly, just like a reptile's skin. They have an outer covering made of feathers and two legs that are used for walking or perching and four limbs that are modified into wings. The feathers separate birds from all other animal species. Think about it. No other type of animal except for birds have feathers. Feathers provide insulation for warmth and can generate body heat. Beak and bills are adapted to the type of food they eat and they have a highly efficient respiratory system. Their lungs are only exposed to oxygen-rich air. They also use internal fertilization and create amniotic eggs, and many birds mate for life. There are more than 30 orders of birds. Some of the most common are the perching birds, that's the largest order, and many are songbirds like sparrows, crows, and cardinals. Birds of prey are the fierce predators with hooked bills and large talons like the condors and the hawks and the owls and eagles. The herons and their relatives wade in aquatic habitats, like the storks and herons and cranes that you see out just around the lakes and ponds in here in Florida. And the ostriches and their relatives, like emus, are flightless birds. They move by running or swimming. Now let's talk about mammals. Well, the first true mammals appeared about 220 million years ago, and mammals flourished after the dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. Some of the basic characteristics of mammals is that they have hair, mammary glands which produce milk to nourish the young, they breathe air, and they have a four-chambered heart with two atria and two ventricles. Mammals are also endotherms. They can generate their own body heat because they're warm-blooded, and they go through internal fertilization. They also care for their young. So let's take a look. Here's the order of placental mammals. Okay, We've got the insectivores. Those are like your shrews and hedgehogs and moles, and they have long, narrow snouts and sharp claws. The sirenians are water-dwelling and slow-moving, like your manatees and your dugongs. The cetaceans live and breed in the ocean, like your whales and dolphins. Whales and dolphins, people think they don't have hair, but they actually do. If you look close, they have whiskers. And uh, the chiroterans, they're winged and capable of true flight, like bats. The rodents have a single pair of long, curved incisor teeth in their upper and lower jaws. That's like your mice and rats, voles, like this little guy in the top left corner, that's a vole. Squirrels, beavers, porcupines, and chinchillas. Some other orders of mammals. You got your carnivores and all different types of mammals there. And you can take a look at all the different characteristics and examples. And finally, here's a few more orders. If you think about it, the primates, they really are the most highly developed as far as their brain and their behavior goes. Those are your humans, of course, lemurs, tarsiers, apes, gibbons, and macaques. So those are the most highly developed mammals. They have usually really high developed brains that are capable of complex thought processes. So that's a quick overview of birds and mammals.